What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to give you my top seven nano reef corals. Now, if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4 p.m. UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's take a look. So the first coral on my list isn't actually a coral at all. It's a rock flower anemone. But these are ideal for nano tanks because they're hardy, so we'll put up with the imperfect chemistry you're more likely to have in a nano tank and they're not fussy about light or flow. There are loads of colour morphs so you can get a great little bright and colourful anemone garden. They don't grow anywhere near as big as bubble tip anemones and they don't move around as much either. And as if that's not enough, they'll also host certain cool critters like anemone crabs, sexy shrimp and anemone shrimp. Number six on my list of best nano reef corals are Cyphastria, and these guys make the list for a number of reasons. Firstly, they like the low light and flow you often get in nano tanks, so you can place them in the corners of your aquarium where other corals might start reaching up for more light. And because they don't grow thick skeletons, they won't consume vast amounts of alkalinity and calcium, which means they won't knock your water chemistry out of kilter too quickly. And for me, that's a key consideration in choosing stony corals for a nano reef, particularly if you're new to corals. They also come in some fantastic colour morphs, and because they're an encrusting coral, they add a little bit of variety to your coral scape. Number five then are zoas. Now zoas are a great hardy but brightly coloured coral that do well in most conditions. And because they're a soft coral, they're low demand in terms of alkalinity and calcium. So they're another one that won't mess too much with your water chemistry. When you're new to the hobby, the temptation is to go for whatever zoa you see in your local fish shop. But if you bide your time and choose carefully, you'll find loads of fantastic looking zoas in multiple colours, sizes and patterns. The downside with these is that they can spread quickly, so isolating them on their own island is a good idea. And when they grow to a reasonable sized colony, you might find they play host to clownfish, which is great if you don't want bigger clownfish hosts like a bubble tipped anemone or euphilia corals that have long sweeper tentacles. In at number four on my top nano tank corals are Leptoceris. Supposedly they tolerate a wide range of light and flow conditions, although I'd keep them in the bottom half of an aquarium, away from strong light. They can grow reasonably quickly, but again, they don't have a thick skeleton that will soak up alk and calcium. Now there are a couple of colour morphs, but my personal favourite is the Jack-O-Lantern with a bright orangey gold body and fluoro green eyes. The Leptoceris is a great little encrusting coral that will add colour to your nano reef that you probably don't already have in any of your other corals. First on the podium is the John Deere Leptostrea, and this is one of my favourite corals in my personal tank. It's another encrusting LPS coral, so it won't drain your tank of elements too quickly, and while it prefers low to medium light, it will tolerate high or low nutrients without much fuss. There are different colour morphs, but the John Deere is a different shade of green to most corals, and looks fantastic with its orangey yellow eyes. They're not as aggressive as some LPS, but will probably win a battle with peaceful corals, so make sure you give them a little bit of space to grow into. And the runner-up of my top seven nano corals are Montipora. And the only thing keeping these off the top spot is that they are fast growing SPS corals. So you'll need to keep a close eye on your parameters if you want to keep these beauties. But having said that, they're some of the more forgiving SPS corals in terms of nutrients, lighting and flow. And if you get your tank conditions right, they'll reward you with vivid colors and awesome fluorescence. There are dozens of varieties of Montes, but my favourites are the plating Undata and the various types of encrusters. The Undata is a nice alternative to the usual red, green and purple plating Montes, which can look a little dull once you get past the initial excitement of getting your first LPS coral. One of the things I love about encrusting Montes is that you can stick them to coral skeletons to make them grow into the shape of Acropora, which gives a little more variety to your scape in terms of growth patterns. All you need to do is ask your LFS if they have any dead Acropora skeletons and you're away. And number one on my list of top seven nano reef corals are Acans. And when I say Acans, I actually mean Micromusa Lord Harrensis, as they were recently reclassified. Acans suit nano tanks because they don't mind the high nutrient levels that are more common in smaller tanks with lots of fish. Although they can grow fairly quickly and they will have a dense calcium filled skeleton. So they're a coral that will require you to monitor your levels closely and dose calcium and alkalinity in the medium to long term but they're not as demanding as SPS corals in that respect, so they still qualify as relatively easy to keep. And they top this list because of their vast array of spectacular colours and interesting contours. We get some great rainbow colours here in the UK, but if you're fortunate enough to live in the States, you will truly be spoiled for choice. Acans are an absolute showstopper of a coral and thoroughly deserve top spot on this list of best nano reef corals. So there you are then, they are my top seven nano reef friendly corals. There are loads of other choices though, so let me know what your favourites are in the comment section below. If you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday's video. And until next time, happy
happy reefing.